Hello, uh, welcome to STEM with Mr. Judah. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create a die from scratch on Tinkercad. To get here, you log into Tinkercad. When you log into Tinkercad, you can log in with Google um, and it will bring you to a page where it has your creations. If you haven't created anything yet, then it, it won't be here. You are going to click on learn. As you create things, it will show up. Make sure you're on 3D. I do have lessons on the circuits section, but make sure you're on 3D. I have a lesson on all these. If this is your first lesson, you definitely want to go through the beginnings. Click on lessons. I have a video on each one of these. You click see all lessons, and now we can get die from scratch. Now, you don't have to do that. You could just follow along with my video, but I think it's nice to have the directions there as well. If you've started this and you made a mistake, just click restart project. And then all you have to do is click start right here. So just mouse over and click start. All right, it says this lesson is all about the work plan and how to make it work for you. We're also going to combine everything you've learned in all the basic lessons here. So let's get started. So begin by finding, and this is what we'll be creating. Okay, may not be exactly what you make, but you can try very, you know, you can put your own spin on it. Begin by finding the blank die shape in the shapes panel. You'll find it in the symbol shape panel on the right side of the, of the screen. So if we go over here, you'll see, uh, you'll see all these different little, uh, I, I guess, categories for things. I, I do believe that we should just be able to scroll down and it'll show up there. I might have to move my, my camera. All right, it's right here. So it says dice. It says drag the blank die shape to the area outlined in the orange. So we just drag it out there. It doesn't have to be exact, but it can be. I'm zooming in by using my mouse wheel. You should have a mouse for this, okay? Without a mouse, it's going to be a little hard, okay? Get a mouse. It says you may need to change the shape drop down menu from basic shapes to symbols to locate it. So uh, I don't see symbols on here. So maybe that's a little outdated. It should just show up at the bottom. Wasn't a, a problem at all. You know, if you click on other things, other things will show up. But I think it's just in basic shapes. I, I doubt it would be in text and numbers. Basic shapes down at the bottom. All right. And make sure it's a solid. Okay. Don't make it a hole. We don't want it to be a hole. Then click next. The following lesson is a part of a larger Tinkercad project. Check out this and more projects on Tinkercad's Instructable page. Next, we move the work plane to the top of the die. So locate the work plane tool at the top of the shapes panel on the right side of the screen. It's right here. Click and drag a new work plane to the top surface of the die. So we just drag it and put it right there. This helps us to align things a little bit better. Okay. You don't have to do it, but it, it sure helps align things. This is the uh, great job. Your work plane will now appear as if it's sitting on top of the die. Next, locate the number one in the shapes panel. So I would just say go to text and numbers, and then we're looking for number one. We go to the second page, and here's number one. Drag the number one to the work plane, and I'm going to just try to drag it to the exact same spot. If you can't get it exact, that's... That's okay, but I would try. Click next. Because the one is sitting flat on top of the die, we need to adjust it to make it cut away from the surface. Let's move, let's move the shape down one millimeter to fit in the area highlighted below. So remember, you can change your view or zoom for better positioning. Changing the snap grid, and I agree with this, uh, from one to 0.25 may also help with positioning. So we've got the snap grid, and that's how You'll notice it just sort of, it jumps over in certain increments, right? If we want it to be, if we're having trouble lining up exactly where we want, we can change that snap grid to be less. And now as I drag it, you'll notice I have a lot more control, much more fine control over it. So we'll leave it lined up. Uh, let's move the shape down one millimeter. So to move it down, we just click that and we can drag down. Now I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, if do you if you see this number right here, I, I think it's much easier just to type. So I want it to be negative one. Enter. Now it is below that work plane. Eh, we can't really see it. 
is below that work plane. It should be. Right? So this is zero right on the work plane, and then we can say negative one. Enter. Now it's interesting because it's not lining up. Well, I guess it is lining up. All right, cool. Next, let's repeat the previous steps to place the other numbers on the other sides of the die. Grab the work plane tool and drag it to another side. Okay, so remember, we can we can rotate our view, right? So if we want to rotate our view, and actually we could just rotate our entire die. That would probably be easiest. So we could highlight the whole thing. Grab it, rotate it 90 degrees. The farther out you are, the more fine control you'll have. Okay, I want to move it 90 degrees. And that did not turn my plane. However, I can just add that plane right here. So I drag my work plane. Say this is my new work plane. We do the same thing, I'm guessing. So let's put number two. Oops, they want it on the other side. I don't know why. That was interesting. All right. Let's do that. Let's drag it another 90 degrees. Now, you making it yourself, I don't know. Maybe this is the, the correct way the numbers are. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. So instead of doing that just to match what they want, I'm going to press uh, back. So we do need to follow their directions, and that, that can be a hard thing. Uh, let's change the work plane. So we're just going to click it, and we're going to say it's on this side. If you can't get it, like that, you might have to just move, change your view a little bit. Okay. Now that's our work plane. I would have just rotated it 90 degrees, but I guess that's how my brain works. Click it, drag it, put it right there. And then I'm guessing we want to put it one millimeter into it. Yep. You see how the, the box is a little off. So we can click that and we can just bring it down to negative one. All right, moving on. Now grab the work plane and drag to the right side. Okay, so they're saying this side, so now we can grab our work plane, drag it there. Now we're working off this. They want us to put the number three. Now that's a little hard with my view to line up, so I'm going to line it up better. Bring it to three, rotate. I'm right clicking to rotate that view, and then I'm gonna bring this down one millimeter. On to the next one. And they want it on this side. So grab my work plane. All right. Now I would have been rotating the object, but this is fine as well. Uh, I'm guessing they want number four. Yep. Perfect. So we will drag our four. Now I'll change my view so it's just a little bit easier to line up. There's four. Turn my view. Bring it down a millimeter. So that says negative one. Let go. And we keep going. Five. Oops click next, grab the number five, put it right in there. May not be lined up perfectly. You can use your arrows to move it. That looks good to me. Move it down one millimeter. The reason why we want to follow their directions perfectly is because uh, sometimes it won't pass you. You might make something that looks perfect, but then it just says you don't pass it, especially if your teacher is looking at your progress through the classes. Follow the directions so this thing knows that you're actually doing it correctly. Now it wants number six. Well, this one, obviously that looks like a nine, okay, but we know it's a six. And then I'm going to bring it, grab that cone, bring it to negative one. Great work, you've placed all the number shapes. Let's reset the work plane by dragging a new work plane onto the editor and placing it anywhere on the ground. So I'm just gonna move out, grab the work plane, drop it anywhere else. Okay, now we have our normal work plane. All right, now obviously this is not correct, we're not done yet, okay? We're almost there. Select all the numbers and set them to be holes. Now when you're doing this, if you press, if you hold down control, so hold control, and then click on the next shape. I'm sorry, hold shift, click on the next shape. Don't click on the dice, okay? I'm gonna hold shift. All right, now I've highlighted all my numbers and then and set them to be holes, so we'll click hole. And now we'll be able to tell, did we select all of them because they're no longer colored, right? The die, you could even change the color of the die if you wanted just to make sure, but it's not see-through, so it's not a hole. 
And then I'm guessing they just want us to combine them. Now select all the shapes, including the die. The easiest way is to just click and drag. And then they want us to group it. So we use group. I said the word combine. Sorry about that. Say group. And now it's going to put them together. Now you'll notice if I click off, if I click off of it, oh, that's interesting. Let's see. Congratulations, I did it. It looks horrible. There we go. So it takes a little bit to render, and sometimes it takes a long while to render, and I'm not sure why that is. You can also change the colors. We can go here. We can click on solid and then choose a different color. So maybe I want it to match what they wanted originally. I could have chosen different fonts. I could have, instead of choosing numbers here, I could have done those by text and I could have changed the font. So maybe I could have, maybe I wanted the number one. Oops, I want the number one, but I want to see how the font's different, right? I could have done it a different font. They only have four options there. I guess it's five because I don't think they match that perfectly. So you could have done a different font. It's up to you. Uh, if you want to go back and change these, this is, let me show you this. If I click, a lot of my students will miss this. I can ungroup it. So it brings it right back. But I can also, I'm going to leave it grouped. If I double click, watch. So two times. Now it breaks it up just like it ungrouped it. And I can hold shift. And I can highlight those numbers. And if I had entered them using the text tool, I could change their font. Now, since I didn't, they're just normal 3D objects and there's not much I can do with them. Okay. So, I mean, I could, I guess if they were a solid, I could change their colors, right? Now they're all green, but we don't want that. All right. And then when I click off, I didn't have to highlight them. When I click off, it'll go back to the combined shape. So that is Die from Scratch. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Hopefully that saved you some time or, or I don't know, solved some issues. So have a great day, everyone. I'll see you later. By the way, like and subscribe it. Share this with anyone that it helps. And hopefully I can get these out and, and it makes your life easier. See ya.